be able to pop up. And I just, I sent him the link. Yeah, he's got it. He just did yeah. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay, cool, cool. Stuff that pops up on our screen, like text and all that, doesn't, it doesn't show on your screen, right? What's that? Like, if we get text or message from your kids or whatever, it doesn't. No, pop no. Up. Not unless you hold the phone up to the camera. <laughs> I forgot, you're, you're shooting from the phone. I'm trying to figure out why this thing's not working. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, is there a line through your video icon? Yeah, we're not seeing your face there, Kristen. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Oh, yeah, look at that bottom, hit that red line and that camera. Oh, there you are, there you are. Recording in progress. Uh, right. Disembodied voice. Yay! <laughs> Quick fact, it was Rio de las Lagas with two L's, L-L-A-G-A-S, that's River of Source, American yeah. River. Um, and we just touched on the Mothman um, before we got cut off, now we're back. Um, Nate, we were talking about how you got into graveyards uh, from the time you were a little kid. I guess you were fascinated with it when you first went to your grandfather's, where your grandfather's buried. Did you do a video about that graveyard? Because that sounds really familiar. I've been watching your stuff for about three years, and I'm wondering... So I've done a few videos there. Um, yeah, when he, when the, the 100 year anniversary of his death, I did a video and uh, same with my grandma. And um, there's a an actor buried probably about 150 feet away from them. Um, I can't remember his name, but he was on the TV show Peter Gunn. And uh, so I. He's the only celebrity buried there. So I thought, hey, what the heck, you know? Uh, let's throw him a bone and, and get, you know, hopefully other people come out and visit his grave and, you know, say, hey, I get to visit the grave of, you know, a movie star or TV yeah. show guy or whatever. How, how many graveyards have you uh, filmed at so far? How many cemeteries in general? Or? Yeah, what the, they actually have episodes on. I, I haven't. Just, oh, okay. You just did a recent episode that popped up, but that's the first time I've seen it pop up in a while. It seems like you, 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 uh, you took a break for a while, or yeah, I guess you could say I took a break. Um, I've been kind of for the past probably year and a half. I've been kind of I've been very easily distracted. Um, I I put a lot of work into my videos and uh, a lot of heart and soul, a lot of time, a lot of my own money, and. Uh, I just sometimes I'm deeply disappointed the, the the how many people watch my videos and then I hear people say oh you do great videos you you speak very clearly you have a lot yeah. of information you know and yeah. it's like man like that's great and I love those compliments because uh, that that's what fuels me to continue on I just wish that I had I just wish sometimes my videos would get at least more than a hundred views <laughs> because that would get that's a little bit more incentive I mean Thanks. there's there's people out there that uh, that put less um, effort into videos, doing the same kind of content as I do, and they get more views. I'm like, well, I get it, you know. I'm not, I don't like George Clooney. I'm not a cute guy, you know, doing doing these videos. No, but Christian, Christian, you know what? I mean, just to chime in with you, you know, a lot of people I know think about that that little Rubik's cube a lot, and like sometimes you wonder, like they ask you to pay and partner up. So now you got people that are going to start making money off your videos. You don't even know who they are. TikTok, all the people, if you don't yeah, monetize true. them, they start, that's number one. Number two, it's like there's some kind of algorithm or if you decide to endorse their products and if you pay money, uh, it, it, there's ways. But the one example, there was a band that uh, I knew and one of the guys that, that uh, worked out with who the bass player, he was much older than the guys uh, that started the band. And I told him, I says, yeah, man, like, so I remember your videos used to get, like, maybe three, 400 hits. You're getting, like, 13, 14,000. He goes, yeah, man, these young guys, they showed me what to do. I says, well, what are they doing, and how many do they get? And he says, well, they get, like, 50, 60,000, and he said, they get it all the time. And I said, well, what do they do? He said when he met them, they told him, hey, stick with us, we'll show you. What they, they pay, one of them pays, like, $38 a month at the time for some service. He posts, he has some other college groupies. They do a lot of things to generate that, but even that, that's not a, a, a lot considering some people, 
you know, go viral, but, you know, it's, I'm like you, it's some kind of algorithm, but there's some other way because there's people with good content and they, you know, you never see them at all. So, you know, don't feel alone, brother. I mean, there's, there's got to be some kind of code you can crack. It's, yeah. like getting, it's like hitting a lottery. I, I did the. Um, the you think about hitting one. a lottery still? Okay. It, it, it is. You know. I mean, one. Uh, Christian's right. You know. I mean, if, if, if you look like Jake Paul, or if you if you've got a, a niche, you know, if you one yeah. of the Kardashians or something like that. Yeah. And now there's there's celebrities doing their content too. But there, you guys, a guy named Mr. Ballin out there. I guess he's oh, the next yeah, Navy Ballin. SEAL. He does a lot of things there. There's that, that guy you you showed me who does the uh, he's a ex ex inmate who does in you know videos oh, yeah, about yeah, yeah. how he wants to kill all the child molesters and I mean it's there's a certain niche that every, you know once in a while it'll pop and then somebody will get noticed and then if yeah. uh, there's a, a podcast called Soft White Underbelly where he just does interviews yeah and, the Underbelly I thought I would, yeah, yeah so I mean there's different ones out there and it's it's just kind of like hitting the lottery I I had a guy. Uh, good friend of mine um to co-host that that podcast with me and we did it for about a year and the most we got was seven maybe ten thousand views on a, on a single episode and he was doing most of the um work as far as scheduling guests getting authors well all we had was authors but um yeah seven and seven you're not making any money with that i mean it's yeah. uh, sure it yeah. sounds better than a hundred but it's really no yeah. difference at all because you're not getting a dime from youtube it's not like the early days of YouTube where they actually paid you. You're not getting anything. You have to, um, you know, mod- you have to sell products or. Hey, what about or- TikTok? TikTok is. I don't even. I don't even know how they make money from TikTok, but these kids people have seemed to figure like it out. And I don't know how they do it. You know, these yeah, people act like they're making money. I'm like, how? You know, and, and you know, there's a, a lot of musical artists that like. You've heard of, they're not doing anything, and then you've got these guys in the background with like six and eight cars and houses and cash, and you're like, like, how is this, how is this happening? It's just crazy. I, I know a few guys that have actually rented Lamborghinis, done a video with their Lamborghini, and then got tons of views because of that. Okay, so, okay. And, and it was that, you know, fake until you make it kind of thing. They, they, they put it to practice, and it, <laughs> yeah, it kind yeah. of worked for them, so... I still think it's like hitting the lottery. I mean, you, you, you put in a lot of time, and sometimes you get nothing. And I got frustrated for with about a year on the other one. And I can see uh, Christian's frustration. I mean, they have this Chick-fil-A girl who does videos where she's just making faces. And she's getting buku hits. And here Christian is putting all this hard work. And, like, I'm a big fan because I love history. Uh, I, I know Phil loves history. I know Zandine loves history. So, yeah, we're going to gravitate towards Christian and not look at the Chick-fil-A girl who's making <laughs> stupid faces, you know. And I'm sorry, I just, I'm not into watching stupidity on videos which do mass all these hits. So, yeah. I asked my great aunt, I, I asked my great aunt, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, do you watch YouTube? She said, "Boy, what?" She said, "Are you crazy?" She said, "I don't, I don't get up every day and watch people make a fool of themselves. I can see that any time. Are you crazy?" And and I, I thought about it. So that was her. She said she doesn't want to watch people making a fool of themselves every day. You know what? Uh, it, it, what's really interesting now is, is go ahead and pick up pick up your phone and look up what movies are playing in the movie theater now. There's like four. <laughs> There's only like know, three or four movies out. Everything Nobody makes is, movies anymore. No, everything is going directly to Netflix or to Amazon Prime or to, you know, to Hulu. And they find a lot of old stuff, too, and put it like it's new, too. Well, I love the old stuff. Yeah, that's yeah, that's mind, almost all I watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, Tubi I has a lot of that, too. And what, I need more horror. And you, you look at Boys. Okay, Boys right now is really hot. Everybody's watching it. And if you watch it, it's just people exploding. Their heads are exploding. The, um, the people are walking into penises and exploding. I mean, and that's what people want to watch. They don't want to watch history, to, damn it. To, to, be, to be fair, they're, they're, the reason why they like the boys, Paul, is that uh, Marvel has oversaturated the world with uh, uh, superhero boy, movies. Bill. Yeah. They've been going on 20 years now. They've just been pumping them out and pumping them out. And one superhero. They, they don't have enough superheroes. they got a great one. Oh, we don't have a female Spider-Man. Let's create a Madam Web. 
And, uh, and it's just not bad enough that we just got one Madam Web. We got to have three young girls under her that also have Spidey powers, and one guy, one bad guy, who's got Spidey powers. And it's just like, give it a fucking rest already. I, I love Peter Parker. That's great. You could have left it alone in the '70s, as far as I was freaking concerned. And so that's why movies like Deadpool, which are anti-superhero movies, are becoming popular. And The Boys is an anti-superhero show. Now that Jen. Whatever thing that you told me that 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 it was a spinoff of the boys, Gen that was v. terrible because Gen V, because that was an all inclusive piece of shit that pandered to. Oh God, now we need to have transgender superheroes because we got to include everybody. You know, you can't leave anybody out. Stop um, it, Phil! I'm gonna laser you. <laughs> yeah, right. and, and that's that's why the boys does so well because the the Homelander character yeah. is like a total narcissist. Oh, yeah, 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 and total, he doesn't total. give a shit. Yeah. Like, my favorite scene, I think, was season one. They showed him on top of some skyscraper building outside, and he's jerking off. Yeah. He's, like, on top of a skyscraper, yeah, 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 looking yeah, at things, yeah. just jerking off. Oh, my God. <laughs> I lost it, but I, I mean, you can't pick a more narcissistic thing to do than, you know, just get on top of the tallest building and just and Phil, jerk off his, to the world. And his motto is... I could do what the fuck I want to do. Exactly. And people <laughs> love that. You know, um, which is exactly why um, Trump's going to be the next president again. Oh, yeah, yeah. There so you people go. love that. But people I got, love that. I got to get back to Christian. You know. Christian, yeah. okay, I, you know, I've, I've done some traveling. And I saw um, the first female serial killer, uh, her gravesite, Lavinia Fisher, in South Carolina, and I gravitate, it's so funny, I can go on vacation, but I'll gravitate towards a tombstone, and when I was in Paris, I saw the tomb of Napoleon Bonaparte, and I went to Billy the Kid, William Bonnie's grave, over in New Mexico, and I saw the Voodoo Queen Marie Laveau at St. Louis Cemetery Number 1, so when you go on vacation, is that, is, do you gravitate towards a cemetery? I don't know why I do. No, but Paul, I that's do. just you. <laughs> that's just me. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm 100% guilty of that. Uh, for instance, um, probably a great example of this. Um, last summer, last August, uh, the, the band that I played drums for, uh, we went on tour for a week, uh, about a week and a half. And uh, I knew we were going to be in Spokane, so I was like, okay, there's got to be some really interesting people buried in a cemetery nearby. Now, I know the guys in my band are not into that, but, you know, they do like me telling the stories every so often. And uh, so I, I found out that this uh, this, uh, this uh, preacher was buried in the, in the Spokane Cemetery. I can't remember the name of the cemetery, but his name was uh, John G. Lake, and uh, he had... An incredible gift of healing, and since I come, since the church I belong to is like Pentecostal, it's like kind of, it's kind of within my wheelhouse, and uh, it was one of, one of the many, uh, one of the many uh, people I kind of like looked up to um, in, in their preaching and just in the, in the amazing supernatural things from God that they did that are just absolutely out of this world crazy. So the opportunity to go visit his grave, I kept saying, oh, i got to check out this guy's grave. And, and then finally we did. It was it was raining that day, but I didn't care. <laughs> so we stopped by. They, you, know, I, they, you know, I said, hey, just be 20 minutes. I just want to check out this guy's grave. And uh, But, yeah, anytime I, anytime I go somewhere, um, I always want to find out the cemeteries in the area, do, do as much research to find out who's there. I'm not necessarily looking for the famous people or the historical people. Sometimes I'm looking for... Everyday people like you and I who have an interesting story. Maybe they might have died tragically or they lived an interesting life or something interesting or unusual happened to them um, that I think that that story should be told. Absolutely. Absolutely. You ever look at the, you ever look at the Zodiac or the, the birthdays, anything like that when you're walking by or anything? Because when I was, I used to like look at the birthdays. I'm like, oh, there's a Capricorn, there's a Pisces that's, you know, Weird things when you look at the tombstones, you know. Uh, I do look at the uh, the imagery that's on there. Um, you know, like the fraternal organizations, their their um, emblems and stuff like that, their symbols. Um, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. You know, like uh, the Masonic ones. Yeah, 
yeah, it's interesting. Like sometimes I come across some stuff that I don't know, and I'll take a picture of it, and I'll send it to uh, a friend of mine that's part of the Sacramento um, Sacramento Historical Society. Ask her because uh, she used to do. Um, her name is Tina. She used to do uh, tours at the Sacramento City Cemetery. So if I come across something, I don't know what it is, but I'm very curious to know. I'll I'll send. I'll message her a picture, and uh, she typically dispatches me right away and tells me what it is. And um, oh, that's cool. But yeah, I mean, there's you find so many interesting things on people's graves. I mean, just not just the saints. Sometimes it's the scriptures they use. Um, sometimes it's pictures. Uh, it was quite interesting. I went to uh, the cemetery in Fresno to see. Uh, ah, gosh, I can't. Remember. Uh, his first name was Lonnie, I can't remember his last name, but he was the lead singer of Redbone. And uh, and myself being Native American, I was really excited to, to see a, um, another Native American's grave, but not only that, like a musician like myself. And I walked around the cemetery, and there's like so many people with, on their headstones, it's like the 49ers or the you know the Raiders like your logo on their tombstone. It was just like, I mean, I've seen it before, but never like, I mean, this cemetery had a lot of that. A lot of the sports teams, like on the sports teams, I was just wow. This is like I never oh. seen this before. And in Las Vegas, yes, yeah. And also, well, too, you know about that, Bill? What's that? You know about that, man? I know. Come and get your love. You know, yeah. Rambo. But uh, I, I just looked it up just so I wanted to know who you were yeah, talking about. I said his name thing, uh, wrong, but yeah, thank you for the correction. And Phil is ending, if you guys don't know it, Christian's also, too, in a musical band. What, what's the name of your band? Nice. Uh, so the name of the band is called Light the Way, and uh, it's a uh, rock punk band. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a Christian band. Um, we're not going to... I like Lyrically, the music is about just, like, everyday struggles and just, like, how um, we're able to get through things with just God's grace. And... Um, but we do have some goofy songs. It's not always like, you know, um, does it come off like spiritual or religious all the time? Uh, it's just it's just fun music. And for those that don't know what pop punk is, you're watching this, I, I always tell people, uh, just think Green Day or Blink Way too. Even though we don't sound like that, <laughs> that's just the best uh, example of what pop punk is. So. And you yeah. guys went on tour too. You, what's, what states did you go to? So we did the Pacific Northwest. Okay. And I'm guilty. Well, we got to Washington and we stopped. Uh, I forgot where we stopped. And I was wearing uh, my shirt that had like Bigfoot and had a UFO on it. So I, of course, when I stopped somewhere, we're in the woods, yeah. you know, like in Washington, I have to ask, is it yeah. Bigfoot? You know, like that's just I'm, I'm guilty of that. So um, of course, when I told the guys in my band, they all you know, roll their eyes, but they they know me well enough. So. Um, but yeah, we, we played uh, uh, Idaho. It was the first time I've ever been to Idaho. And. Um, what part? We went to Boise. Uh, okay, but I was up in Coeur d'Alene. I was up in Coeur d'Alene. How'd okay. you like it? How'd you like it, man? Um, it, it was different. I mean, um, I don't really what to say. I mean, I thought we were going to drive into Idaho because it's like, yeah. been, you know, Idaho's basically become the promised land, like Coeur d'Alene. <laughs> And like, if I was going to drive there, it was just going to be nothing but like crosses and, and Trump flags, but it wasn't. Yes. It was the complete opposite. 